history here. Brisbane have won the Premiership. Even when that siren went, there was a thousand things going through my head at the one time and, and they all just sort of, if you can sort of use the word, they just all collide with one another um, at the exact moment and uh, you just become overwhelmed with emotion. Those few hours are so good that you, you spend the rest of your, I mean, it's, it's our livelihood as well, but if you just talk emotional, for the rest of the year we spend, we spend ourselves trying to achieve that few hours of just unbridled joy. You've got to put it in the, the recesses of your mind and enjoy that when you retire and try and achieve the next thing. And I guess, in essence, that, would, that, that is what we're trying to do with the, with the grand final that we won last year is, you know, it was great, now memory, let's try and do it again and make another one. The matters leading to the statement I'm about to make are of a uh, personal nature and I will not discuss them. For the well-being of all concerned, I have taken the decision to cease my playing career with the uh, Kangaroos. I regret the circumstances of my actions which has led to the decision and the pain it has caused to my wife and my family. I apologise to all my teammates and all the Kangaroo supporters. However, I believe this is the only proper and responsible course of action. Thank you. And so arguably the biggest single story in the history of football kicked off season 2002. Captain of the Kangaroos team of the century, Wayne Carey, quitting football after admitting to an affair with the wife of longtime teammate, Anthony Stevens. The build-up to the home and away series was extraordinary. Tony Lockett came back, not only to football, but to the AFL Tribunal. I think he's just a frustrated old man. Western Bulldogs captain Chris Grant spent most of the summer in a saga over insurance due to an old injury. I'm determined that no player should have to go through what I have had to go through for the past five weeks. When the players weren't creating headlines, those who called them were. ABC veteran Tim Lane quitting the new Channel 9 commentary team before the season had even begun. I have to be independent, I have to be seen to be independent and I felt that to broadcast the Collingwood Games with Eddie was to endorse his dual roles and I wasn't prepared to do that. Um, I promised to Tim, I said, I'm going to call the games with the greatest integrity. Yes. Because it's not just Tim's integrity at place here. There's yours, there's Mine, Gary Lyons. I'm not going to work with someone who's biased. Yeah, I'll no, but, tell you that. But not only that. <laughs> and the on-field action saw Port Adelaide making it back-to-back pre-season wins. Fiora. Franku over to Jew. The open goal beckons and he rams it through. Great start for the last quarter for Port. Defeating Richmond by nine points at Colonial Stadium in the Wizard Cup final. When the season proper commenced, two traditional rivals faced off at the MCG with home audiences treated to a new look. This is AFL on nine. Matthew Richardson was on fire with six goals as the Tigers continued their hot pre-season form. Wheels around onto that left foot. Well worked out by Knights on the mark and the mark is taken by Richardson. Hits the ground, fires a goal and he's got it. A cracker who kicked uh, three goals last year from his three games. He's kicked 1-1 one, one in season oh. 2002 over the top of goes as easy as you like. Richardson puts it through for another goal to the Tigers. He kicks down towards half forward. Campbell is down there, waiting behind a half chance, claiming the mark was Rogers, not paid. Campbell runs on, kicks towards the kickoff. Oh. Oh. Zenta! <laughs> Something out of nothing. He took the punt, didn't he? And he just decided, well, this is no set kick. And 
Yeah, he just helps it in the direction. Now it's Hilton breaking away from the pack. Kicks inside the 50. Richardson takes yes. the mark. Plays on. 25 metres out. Gets his sixth. The upset of round one occurred at Amy Stadium, where Port Adelaide, fresh off their Wizard Cup win, were defeated by the Kangaroos. Glenn Archer tried to barge his way through. He's got a free. He's got a free. An interesting call. 200 game hero Glenn Archer kicked the winning goal, and one of the season's more touching moments occurred post match as Archer, along with his newly appointed captain and great friend Anthony Stevens, were chaired from the ground. Rarely has the Ruse song been sung with such gusto. Tony Lockett's comeback to football featured one kick, typically a goal, but then a cork thigh relegated him to an exercise bike on the bench as his swans Back went down to the off. reigning premiers. Ashcroft, some composure now from the Lions. Long ball, Copeland, space to think. Lepic on the move, couldn't get there. Ackermanis, surely not from there. He's put it through. Goal of the day, Jason Ackermanis, Brownlow middle form there. And the Demons flexed their muscles against Hawthorne in the autumn heat. Delivers again for Green. It was too hot. McKay oh. crunch. Oh, he's passed his way through. The big man, David Neitz, led from the front. What a goal. Inspiring football by the Demons. Melbourne skipper David Neitz now as a permanent full forward led his side to victory, kicking five goals. Into an attacking scoring position. Neitz has got it. Slid into him with players around just watching him. And the skipper comes up with it. Just under 20 minutes last quarter. This would make it hard for the Hawks. And I think it's just going to scrape through. It has. Broadbridge. Oh, here's a goal. This will just about finish them off. David Swartz winds into it. He likes it. Goal up by comes back to signal maybe the end for Hawthorne. Essendon and their captain James Hurd continued their awesome early season form. And have a look at this for a setup. Straight down the middle. Wellman kicks it straight down the throat of his teammate in Johnson. He missed it. And Richmond star Matthew Richardson, who had taken 11 marks in the first half, tore his hamstring in a wretched night for the Tigers. Their night has just gone from bad gone. to absolutely disastrous. Collingwood got on the winning list by the barest of margins against the Eagles. Goal sneak Brody Holland, the unlikely hero with eight goals. Leon Davis, he'll be run down, and he'll be well run down too. That was uh, Chad Fletcher who did the tackling. Is that a goal? Right, gee, it's close. Brody Holland's got five. Long, Tarrant going back. Where's Holland? Rocker, Holland, the danger man. He's got five. Can he make it six? Yes, he can! The Western Bulldogs jumped the Kangaroos at Colonial, kicking late second quarter goals to lead easily at the main break. And uh, Terry Wallace has used his bench well. Also, back inside the 50, Robbins, Brown, this is going to hurt, oh, he's been pretty cocky. He shows the ball, Robert Paul's in the commentary box, <laughs> winces. <laughs> you don't do that, you don't do that. The last of those proved costly, as Nathan Brown's one-fingered salute saw him later receive a $5,000 fine, despite his explanation. There's certain things you can and can't do, but... Uh, Getting things thrown at you all day, it's not like the cricket where you can stop the game and ask people to be removed. You can't jump the fence and do anything yourself. Did someone so, throw something at you during the match? Yeah, I was getting a lot of things thrown at me and it was just an act of frustration or a bit of uh, passion and emotion in the game. I regret that action, but um, that's uh, probably something I have to look at, but it was just a part of the game for me. The Kangaroos eventually made it two from two, as did Brisbane, who handed out another Sanders Gabba thrashing. Across the body, McGrath in two minds, it bounces obligingly for Hull, and the hand pass goes straight to Ashcroft. This is Lynch charging, bounces off Crawford, lines up the goal and gets the 18. And docker Ben Cunningham became a late-game hero for his club against the Saints. This bomb from outside 50, putting Fremantle in front 
for the only time in the game. I reckon it might get touched on the line this one, even with his best kick. So Cunningham, 55 metres out. Good oh, kick. Oh, great kick. Great goal. Dockers in front. After two disappointing defeats, Carlton coach Wayne Britton started the week with the full support of his president. Absolutely. So, and we don't, uh, and Carlton doesn't say those things and then sack him in two weeks' time. And finished it with his team putting themselves on the line with a gutsy win over their greatest rival. Peters had a centering kick, not a bad one either. Hitman right on the 50. It suggests too far out to score. One out in the square, McKernan and Wakeland. Have a fresh footy. Goes for distance. They complete about five metres out. No contest. It slides through. Davis thrown to the ground. There's the siren. Congratulations to the Carlton Football Club. They did everything they had to do tonight and a bit more and they have won by 20 points. The so-called grand final replay turned into a fizzer with Brisbane thumping Essendon by 50 points. Chris Scott, little chip around the corner, looking for Black who controlled it very well. Now it's with Brad Scott. Short kick, loose play, Johnson hard up against the boundary line. Kick short and Brown. Gee, they're playing well at the moment, the Lions. Johnson thumps it long to the goal square. Bradshaw. Simon Black showing he was in for a career best season. Lynch. Wheels around on the right. It's a high ball. Camping underneath it was Hurd. Couldn't mark. Black. Spun beautifully. Sensational play. Akamanis. Third goal. Picked it up nonchalantly, then kicks it. Oh, to Notting. Gee, he's got a great vertical leap, Notting. And he's off. He can run as well. And he can kick from 50. Drives it home. 51 points as they're giving the Bombers a bit of a touch-up. Here they come again. Black. It's not going to be a good night in Kevin Sheedy's 500th game as a coach. Akamanis. Oh, is he going to run past Johnson? This will really, really put salt into the wound. It's coming back! Hackermanis has got four! And the Lions are on fire! Three other teams got themselves on the winning list this round. Port Adelaide, Thompson Kilda. Carr with a sizzling kick. Would have been down the throat of Burgoyne. Had Corns not put up the claw. Handball back, Jew. On his favoured left. Centering ball, Montgomery! Plays on and goals. Bomber Thompson's young cats won a tight one against the Kangaroos. Kilpatrick seizes the opportunity. Handball over the top. Applett from the forward pocket area. Applett goes to goal. And Gary Applett has kicked it. Kangaroos goal and less than a minute to go. King doing a good job in the ruck. Shot for goal by Corey's kicked the goal. And in Tasmania, Hawthorne protected its undefeated record at its other home ground with 20-year-old Chance Bateman slotting through the sealer. It goes across the line, I thought it did. Bateman, hurried kick, good looking kick, that's the sealer. The round was marred by two serious injuries. Moorabbin great Nathan Burke required a knee reconstruction, the 32-year-old vowing to play on in season 2003. I picked up the paper this morning and it, it mentioned retirement and really that's the first time it, it had popped into my head and, and my wife's head and um, certainly by no means have I finished playing football. And Swan Leo Barry required an emergency blood transfusion after suffering a ruptured spleen in a seemingly innocuous accident. That's only really been the last day or so that I've... So I've got a bit of a gauge of what had happened over the previous previous week. Essendon with spearhead Matthew Lloyd in sensational form demoralised the Crows in Friday night football. Ground now punched it away. Force tonight. How could you buy that dummy? Force tonight kicks inside the 50. The mark is taken by Lloyd. He's already got four. Lumfield, Mercedes now, 20 possessions, 26. Yeah, right up. In the meantime, good mark taken by Lloyd. What a pair of hands. Lloyd was also involved in the story from the game as Brownlow favourite Andrew McLeod was reported and subsequently suspended for one week for this incident in the second quarter. 
takes courage to keep your eyes on the footy when someone's coming at you. And it was Andrew McLeod who was a player that was trying hard to get back. Let's have a listen. Two other umpiring related controversies dominated the rest of the week's action with the first at Optus Oval, where Phil Matera received two weeks for making contact with umpire Ray Kelsey. While at the SCG, umpire Gavin Dawes free kick against the Roos' Shannon Motlop with seconds to go gave Darren Creswell the opportunity to win the game for Sydney. So Darren Creswell, this is the scenario. The Roos lead by three, a point's not good enough. A goal will win the game for Sydney as Darren Creswell from 35 metres. He comes in deliberately, drop punt for goal. He's kicked it, the Swans have won. What a game of football. The Swans have won by three points. Oh, and they go to Creswell, reminiscent of that famous preliminary final win over the Bombers. Superb stuff, and the Kangaroo players stand hands on hip in disbelief. How could this game have slipped away from them? What a remarkable game of football. The Swans by three points. And at Geelong, the Cats changed the name of their home ground to Skilled Stadium and then proceeded to live up to the moniker with a 20-goal demolition of St Kilda. But Ling's got it set sail from just outside the 50. It's high. It's going to go through. It's a goal. Peter Riccardi, with four goals on the afternoon, finds the footy on the wing. Beautiful pass, steered it to Graham. Couldn't take the chest mark. Looks like form still eluding him, but this man, bang in form. Steps around, left foot for number five. Magnificent. Beecham just giving the uh, chop out for the Saints defence. Oh. Graham's going to get it back. Oh, He's going to kick a goal for the Cats. No. 100 points plus. Oh, that was volleyball. Someone tell me what that, the method of disposal from Ronnie Burns to his skipper Ben Graham was all about. And that, there's Ronnie, look. <laughs> ah, a little bit of the Darwin coming in, a little bit of rugby. Given the atrocious conditions, a sensational crowd of 84,894 packed the MCG for the Collingwood Essendon Anzac Day fixture. And that afternoon, a famous against the odds victory was the first suggestion that in 2002, the Magpies were the real deal. That should be 50. McGough, Lockyer, Collingwood terrific, kick well inside the 50, Fletcher works in front, could have been held without it, no free kick, Papyrus, Burns, this will hurt! Chopped off there by Fraser, Fraser inside the 50, Davis in front, had it knocked away by Blumfield, but is up again, Lecurious in a way on his left foot, Preston of accuracy, doesn't kick it, goes to Steinford, 20 metres out, Low trajectory, well that's doing it the hard way. It's pumping down again, Burns. Drop punt to the goal square that wobbles its way, a little short. And a mark's been taken unbelievably by Fraser in a six pack. For the ceiling moment, Josh Fraser. A grand future in front of him. The big sticks in front of him here. He kicks the goal that wins the game. Seventeen-year-old Mark McGough in only his second game, the Anzac Day medalist. At Colonial, the Western Bulldogs again kicked their way out of the game. Their ten goals, twenty-one combined with a zero-five start, had them anchored to the bottom of the ladder. Obviously, it's been an issue for us. Uh, we worked on it, but you know we know we can kick them. Uh, it's just a matter of going out and doing it. At Subiaco, West Coast showed their home ground nickname, the House of Pain, would be most apt this year, thumping Brisbane by 46 points. Some assistance, steps inside, right foot kick on goal, Dan Wilton has kicked the beauty! Michael Gardner kicks long from 55, Wilson back with the flight, stands underneath it, ball comes to the front, Copeland. Matera, snap on goal, Peter Matera, the cherry on top of the cake! Cousins, tight situation, a little pirouette from Ben Cousins. Go!
Reigning Brownlow medalist Jason Akamanis was suspended for one week for this incident with Daniel Kerr and after the tribunal hearing put his unique spin on the events. It's alright, not the end of the world mate, believe me. Flooding football style reached perhaps its low point this round where St Kilda and Sydney had three goals between them at half time. And would you believe the score? It's St Kilda 2-2-14, Schwartz has kicked those two. Leading Sydney, 1-4-10, the goal kicker Paul Williams. A dramatic draw, the eventual result. Surely the Saints can't win from here. That's not 15 metres. Seymour, cross oh. the ground. Look out! Oh, the Ruby runs in and kicks the goal. He's hit the post. He's hit the post. Wolf has hit the post. Oh. Scores are level at Colonial Stadium, 32 and a half minutes in. 18 years of age. Looks like he's going to go a Nick Del Santo. 60 metres out. He's got on it. It's not a bad effort, but it's not going to make the distance. It's a draw. It's a draw at Colonial Stadium in one of the most extraordinary football matches you will ever see. And in Adelaide, Showdown 11 saw the power come from 11 points down to defeat the Crows. High kick, almost. Oh, gee, bodies crashing. Poor Adelaide with the numbers, though. This is Burgoyne, 50 metres from goal, has a shot, and they are in front! To the run of Schofield. In fact, it was Poulton. He goes to Franco, and Franco will go inside 50, and the mark is taken by Burgoyne. So the margin's two points. We've gone 22 and a half minutes in this final term. Burgoyne will kick from 45 metres out. On its way. It looks good. It's home. Put it lately by eight points. Wag suggesting that the fifth quarter took place in the Ramsgate Hotel the following night, where players from both teams were involved in a scuffle. To Aubrey, Aubrey. The round started with Collingwood finishing St Kilda's tactics of a complete negative flooding brand of football. Noble transfers plays, held it up in the breeze far too long, and in goes Brodie Holland. Holland lines up and kicks his first for the night, and Collingwood's 14th. This is Beetham running away from his own goal. What oh, missed the footy? <laughs> that is amazing. Aubrey, Holland, the runner outside, died at. Down towards half forward, goes with the right boot. The fear is running back, needs a bounce, can't quite control it. Snaps did well. His first. The joy of an 83 point win tempered by the report to Captain Nathan Buckley, who was eventually cleared. Players are coming in. Well, listen, it was going to be reported here. While the non-Victorian teams, in Brisbane at the Gabba over Geelong, Port Adelaide at home over the West Coast Eagles, and Adelaide with their dominant midfield running right against Richmond, all had impressive wins. The story was in Perth, where Essendon captain James Hurd suffered a sickening injury in the match against Fremantle. There is a lot of blood coming from the face of James Hurd. He's in a very bad way. His multiple facial fractures were likened to that of a car accident victim, wife Tanya flying across the country to comfort him. Uh, until I knew what was happening and everything, obviously a bit panicked, but no, everything was okay, just getting, getting over here as quickly as we could. While Heard recovered, champion full forward Matthew Lloyd had surgery on a ruptured finger tendon that would see him miss seven matches. I suppose my hands are so important for the position I play and things like that, so I know when I get back there'll still be ten games to go. The Don's wretched run with injury continued with star midfielder Joe Mercedi fracturing his wrist. He's real hurt. Came down heavily on the point of that left shoulder. Good news being the win against arch rival Carlton and the return to football of 37-year-old ruckman Paul Salmon. Two of the year's disappointing teams had good wins this round. At the MCG, Hawthorne captain Shane Crawford led his side to a 52-point win over Geelong. This is a handed to him on a plate. Thank you very much. Two easy Hawks. Crawford has three. Check. Crawford again. Another handball this time. Half for Clever. Great gather. And a lovely left footer that kicks Hawthorne's third goal of the time.
return. Cox hands off over the top to Adrian Cox. He goes short and Dixon time. Time to stroll in and kick another one for the Hawks. While a colonial Richmond got up in a thriller against Sydney. Cracker in the pocket. Clever. He kicked it. Oh. Sensational play from Andrew Cracker. You won't see a better goal than that. Fist by Andy Kelloway. Dunkley overruns it. Kelly who fires it up. He's a great player. Kicks towards Raw. Rogers over the top. Here's a chance for the Swan, uh, for the uh, Tigers. Timberdale shouldn't miss, and he does it. He gets it down to Timberdale, who hoists it high. Out comes Callaway. And Andy Callaway's marked 45 from goal. Kelly has it, centre wing, kicked to half forward. Hall, oh, he fell over, shouldn't have. Williams a chance, taken high, no. Play on the call. He's hard up against the boundary line. He's brought down. Great we'll tackle, Wayne Campbell. Great tackle. 28 and a half gone, final turn. There's the siren. The Tigers have got up by a goal. The following day at the stadium, the Bulldogs' kicking woes continued. Chris Grant directly in front to put the Bulldogs. 12 points up, stabbed at it. I think he might have missed. Before Collingwood's Anthony Rocker reached for the sky in a mark that turned the match. Back to Ben Johnson, to Buckley. The gun is away. Kicks toward half forward. Freeborn's got it. Freeborn. Collingwood quickly into attack. This means danger for the Bulldogs. Players are just a little bit free of my normal. He has been threatening this all day. In fact, he stood on Stephen Critiuk's head virtually. And take it from me, boys, it's not a pleasant experience to have that's happened to you. Ruck contest, ball knocked out of Holland. McGough, Fraser, good put Collingwood in front. Short ball, don't know who it was intended for. But this is going to leave the Bulldogs exposed further down the track. Rocker. As Nick Davis will find Rocker on the lead. 20 metres in front of Bartlett. Buckley runs into space. Beautiful kick. Buckley! Yeah, that is a mark. That is a great mark. The Pies' big last quarter, placing them second on the AFL ladder behind the Lions. The top two sides on the ladder, Brisbane and Collingwood, took each other on in a classic at Colonial. It's got through Ackermanis, maybe he's been released onto the ball. He started in defence and he's had an impact straight away with a great left foot goal from Jason Ackermanis. Now Mel Michael, Buckley trying to slow it up. He's gone, he was off and that is holding the ball on point. I don't know about you, Malcolm. Should have been. Buckley will kick the goal anyway. Doesn't matter. Nathan Buckley kicks the goal. Now Batheris around the body on the bad kick to the 50. Tarrant got to the front. Oh. Bossy! Miraculous mark! Talk about one-on-one -on -one contests. We saw Lepich and Rocker, and that was equally as good between Tarrant and Bolton. Technically, it's always hard to kick goals from this side. There must be a little draft come through just to push them. That's Tarrant's coming back got beautifully. Two, two. He's got yeah. three two. Uh, Buckley the target, Voss. I wonder what impact he's going to have in this second half. Michael Voss, at his belligerent best, has kept the goal. What a leader. It's been cut off the pass. Here's a chance of Batheris. He straightens up and calling her in front. 23rd possession goes for Rocker. Charm and edged him out. Did a pretty good job as it turns out. Nodding kept his feet and did that well. Charman almost snookered against the line, but he's found a path to goal. What a kick! What a kick from young Jamie Charman! And the With seconds left, the Lions had one final push forward to snatch victory. Here we go. This is the last roll of the dice. Oh, Heavens kick. kicks a wobbler.
Across the Nullarbor, Fremantle's two gun recruits for season 2002 took centre stage. He's still going. He still might get it. It comes to Crow. Crow's going to get number six, but Jeffrey Farmer helped him out. Former Hawk Trent Crow kicked seven goals, and Jeff Farmer, taking on his former club Melbourne for the first time, had the chance to win the game for the Dockers after the siren. The following day at Marnica Oval, Canberra, 7,671 hardy souls saw the Kangaroos back in form with Brett Harvey outstanding. This man has kicked 3-1 for the afternoon after starting on the bench. Uh, he's a dead-eyed dick and he put that one through. That's his fourth in the margin back out to 14. Arguably the biggest name in football, Tony Lockett, stepped out for Sydney's reserve team, Port Melbourne. His four goals ensured a return to senior football was not too far off. While in the big league at the SCG, Sydney fans voiced their displeasure at coach Rodney Ede. For Ongle stand to my left here, they really did go up as one in booze and uh, yeah, they weren't too happy at all. He swans trailing by 39 points at three quarter time and the lowly Western Bulldogs found form. Eagleton was involved earlier, 75 metres out, long kick from Gilby, going back to Syracuse, takes the mark and kicks the goal. For the second week in a row, Collingwood featured in the match of the round, travelling to Football Park to clash with the rampant Port Adelaide. Comes to Bishop. Bishop does well, steps around a would-be tackler. Kicks yes. over, free ball, and it's a massive kick. Yes. It's a goal. Johnson for Collingwood, kicks to the boundary line. Not close enough, though, as over the top goes Guir, and now Frank who's a beautiful kick. He goes short. This one wasn't a good one. Trevor's handball was good to Jew on the left foot, and he kicks another goal. Anthony Rocker back to McGough who found a bit of space. Lecuria kicks to full forward. Leon Davis one on one. Leon's got it. Buckley thumps it long off one step. Ball comes to ground. French. Here's Rupert Batheris to Leon Davis. He's kicked three. Leon Davis has kicked four. Has kicked four goals. However, once Leon Davis ignited the Magpies forward line, it developed into another thriller with the match going down to the last minute. McKee gets it out, he kicks it forward, up towards half forward, Leon Davis has got the ball, no he hasn't, they dive in on top of it, it comes out the freeborn, back he goes to Terran on the left foot, he kicks it long, Rocker! He's been here before. You back him in, he's kicked well, he's been confident, he's in career best form. Anthony Rocker lines up to make scores level. The clock is ticking. Last roll of the dice for the Magpies to take some points from the game. And Anthony Rocker has, for oh, it's a line ball decision, missed. Oh! Oh. Gary has ordered him. Still could be a chance for a win though if they get a turnover, Collingwood. That's what they've got. They've got to go man on man. They can't put out his own. They have to go man on man here. They're doing that. Got to go long to... Oh, it's a gutsy kick. Ooh. We'll have another look at it. There's a good kick out and there's the siren. And Port Adelaide have won by five points and a well-deserved victory here at Football Park tonight. And it's going to be a bit of... Kane Corn send-off to Brodie Holland, prolonging the drama. Trying to sort it out here. If you call it would stay in there. If they so give it a free Adelaide. kick. Port Adelaide have got to run away. Yeah, run, run yeah. off the ground. Run, run away. Points Pat. in the bag at the moment. They need to get away. How foolish is this? Just leave it, Port. You've got the points. Now you can worry about the replay. At the MCG, Adam Uze celebrated his 150th game with his match-winning mark and goal against the Kangaroos. On that right foot to the square, they need a mark. Has played a fine game, fitting, finishes. Demons have their nose in front. The Saints got up for their first win since round one, defeating Richmond, last year's preliminary finalist, whose season was rapidly slipping away. On its 
its way. What a Distance, kick. beautiful, accuracy, magnificent. <clears throat> yeah, disgraceful performance. Totally unacceptable and unrichmond like. Un yeah. Another coach doing it tough was Sydney's Rodney Eade. Just a week after enduring the wrath of his supporters at the SCG, the Swans took on Essendon in an historic first ever AFL game at Stadium Australia. Once again, Paul, one and a half folly, gives it out to Goods. Goods has got to play it on its Nicks. He can play it on a kick a goal, Billy. Nicks has an important shot, and he's put it through. Swans are in front. E wore his heart on his sleeve as ninth gamer Ricky Mott had this kick to put the Swans in front with just seconds remaining. He is directly in front, 20 metres out, and he kicks this. The Swans are in front at the 27-minute mark. Mott, it's awkward. It's missed. Of course. The Swans trail by three points, and look at what he is. <laughs> At Optus Oval, Carlton's season was going from bad to worse as Adelaide, led by captain Mark Rusciuto with six goals, thumped the Blues on their once feared home patch. To the square. Burton couldn't mark. It's up to the ground level players. Goodwin. Rusciuto sold the dummy. Runs to an open goal. Six straight. The Adelaide Crows. While Bomber coach Kevin Sheedy prepared for war in the lead-up to Friday night football, it was his kangaroo counterparts who came out fired up. None more than Mickey Martin who journeyed forward for a rare goal. And it's a big kick in the context of this match for the kangaroos. Can Mickey do it? He comes in from 45. The kick is on its way! Mickey's done it! The beauty! After the Roos threatened to blow the game apart with a five-goal third quarter, the Dons' Dustin Fletcher snuck through a freakish goal. Carousella dragged down, Barnard gets the crumb, gets inside the 50. How will it run? Well, it's been headed towards the line. Oh, oh, it's across his body, out of the air by Fletcher, his second goal. In an amazing game, it was left to another defender, the Kangaroos' courageous Jason McCartney, who had the opportunity of sealing the game. We've seen a lot of this in recent weeks, a kick for glory, close to the final siren. And again tonight, McCartney, magnificent, gun barrel strikes. At Colonial, Tony Lockett returned for Sydney, kicking just the one goal against Collingwood. He's got the set, big plugger, got hands on the football, now he's got it, look at goal! We got him home eventually! <laughs> the Pies trailed by 12 points at three-quarter time, but a six-goal finishing burst had the Magpie army roaring. From Fraser scrambles it forward, oh, over the top, Karen kicks his fourth for the quarter. At Football Park. The Crows confirmed their status as a bona fide contender with a seven point win over the Lions. Ball still alive. Burton keeps it in, slung to ground. Rusciuto squares it towards the top of the goal square. Shell comes out for Adelaide at ground level. There's still a chance. Stevens picks it up, snaps it back, and catch the goal. In York Park, Tasmania, power forward Warren Treadray was outstanding, pulling down 16 marks in his side's big win over the Hawks. Loads up, long drop, punt, goal, square. Treadray oh, goal! Sensational goal. While a colonial, players squinted through the winter sunshine as Spider Everett returned from a knee injury in grand style. Across the ground, Everett. Crowd love that. He's back in the action. Schwarz on the wing. Chance for the Saints here. Schwarz inside the 50. Awkward bouncing ball for Hamill. Hunter right there with him. That's a big assignment. Still Hamill. Well done, Hunter. Dragged him down. The hand pass to no one in particular. Picked up by Cripps. Had it knocked away. Charging in Hamill again. Del Santo. Back to Hamill. Breaks a tackle. 55 metres out. Gave it away. Judd dropped the mark. Couldn't believe his good fortune. Down he goes. Play on's the call. Picked up by Davis, got it out of there, it was a hot one. Fletcher couldn't control it. In from Spider, that cure is a jockey. Spider's got it again, slaps it on the wow. boots. How about wow. that? Two great goals for the Saints. The Eagles again were humbled away from home. Davis runs onto it, shrugs the tackle, gives it off the mill. 
Thought about the handball. Now the right foot, Banana around the corner, the impossible. And he has nailed it. Milne has kicked three. Look at the Saint players congratulate each other. There's no solution. If, if, uh, if things are made um, as easy as possible for travelling teams, um, I think that's a fair solution. At, at this stage, things aren't made as easy as possible for travelling teams, and you know, that's up to uh, the people who make those decisions to, to remedy it. Richmond kicked their way out of the game against the Roos with a one-goal six last quarter. And Kellaway has marked, plays on to Tippendale. I'm not sure about that. Give him his confidence, he hit the post. Oh, He's turning into the Arnold Brightest of this game. Watch 3 3 to 4 12 since half time. Amazing figures, and the Tigers could live to rue them. Whoa. Harvey gives it a ride and kicks a goal. His third. However, the enduring memory of the match was club great Mick Martin paying tribute to his dying father, Brian, who passed away three days later. Yeah, did you, did you see your dad today before you came in? Yeah, I went and seen him today, and uh, he was in bed. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know, I suppose mum would have mentioned to him that I was wearing his number today, but uh, you know, and, and probably hearing the siren now and being told if he'd won, I think he'd be, he might, he might have a smile on his face, but have a smile on his heart. Yeah, Essendon's injury woes started to hit home against Port Adelaide as they suffered a rare thumping at Colonial Stadium. His way through, Guerra slip. Nick Stevens, who's been outstanding. Kick towards Joe, clever ball, gets onto the left foot and kicks another one. What a magnificent goal. Peter Burgoyne with some pace from the pack, kicks to half forward. Chance for Jew, handball to Treadray. Oh, he broke the tackle too easily of Mark Johnson. Then kicks with the left foot and kicks a goal. The following afternoon saw the same now ground host a classic finish team. where Geelong, who was seemingly cruising against Carlton, found themselves in a dogfight as the Blues rallied. The dramatic finish not without controversy as Blue Simon Wiggins claimed he touched the winning kick. His coach supported his charge. I mean, Riccardi never kicked a floater in his life. I don't float off his foot, he's one of the best kicks in the game. Yeah, play with Wiggins. He's only a young fella, but he's adamant that he touched the ball. The traditional Queen's birthday clash between two old rivals saw Collingwood, whose forward Chris Tarrant was outstanding with seven, thump Melbourne by 51 points. Great well, chase, very bold, and he's been pinged out. He 
tackle. It's like he got the handball off, didn't it? That's a little bit hard. Chris Tarrant knows how to kick these goals. Oh, oh, he's going to kick them. Not a problem in the world. That's five of the best. The Demons also lost key big man Alistair Nicholson, his knee injury requiring a full reconstruction. The first week of round 12 saw Hawthorne take to the MCG with their season virtually on the line. But their inability to nail crucial opportunities left them in 12th position after their loss to Essendon in Friday night football. Jenkins' kick is in front of Barnard, breaks the tackle, over his head, Barnard goes for the miracle goal, and he's kicked out, he kicks his third, bombers by seven points. I think our supplies themselves, they would have expected to kick at least Probably two out of the three, you know, under normal circumstances. So, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to hang the blame on anyone because, you know, we we know, the players know. West Coast broke their Melbourne duck by the barest margin against Carlton. Mansfield, Mansfield, trying to keep it alive. West Coast have it. Cousins, Glass over the boundary line. Seven seconds remaining. West Coast are going to hold on. West Coast are going to win by a point. One second remaining. West Coast to win their first game in Melbourne via a decision on the boundary line. There it is. The Eagles, 7-5, and five, have defeated Carlton in another comeback. Two and two weeks to the West Coast Eagles. Nothing going right for Carlton. Scott Camperelli cannot believe it. Tappen once again. They have gone. The Cats inflicted Sydney their sixth straight loss. King takes it out, snap it, goal. Oh, don't tell me! Don't tell me! He's kicked it! And in Perth, Collingwood surrendered a 20-point lead as the Dockers turned on their best home form. Troy Longmuir wobbles a kick inside 50. His brother Justin gets on the end of it from the boundary line. Banana kick with the right boot! Oh, miracle goal! Oh, as Bethera's under pressure, jammed it on the boot, ricochets to Seager, slips a hand pass away to Hazelby. players on the sidelines for Collingwood, Coops towards the outer side, Simmons with the judgment, tracks it well, he's at left half forward, another goal here with Rock Collingwood, long down towards full forward, Mibbers, surrounded by tall timber, the little man with a head of hair has taken the mark 10 metres out. Magpie coach Mick Malthouse claiming his team needed to freshen up. Quite frankly, I thought our blokes were very, very tight, it's been a big season. Take, rob nothing of, or take nothing away from Fremantle. Before sending his team on a break to the Northern Territory. In the second week, the Western Bulldogs won their fifth game in a row against St Kilda. Ruckman Luke Darcy again outstanding. Sets it up, kicks it to centre half forward position. Coming out with Saunders, Smith. Darcy wants that fifth goal, he wants the three Brownlow votes and I think he's just about got the lock. And Melbourne showed they'd freshened up after the break, so returning to form against the Crows. Oh. oh, here's a chance, Nathan Brown kicked it low and kicked it on wide. Which is an important kick for them, it would almost put it beyond the Crows. Brad Green, 12,000 people at Optus waiting, waiting, they wait no longer. You can see the excitement, Green kicks the goal, and that's three of the, for the day. Brisbane defeated the Kangaroos in a classic encounter. Out of the middle, here go the Roos, Burton, inside the 50, King comes out and attacks it through his hands, Sinclair, just got a sniff at the moment, the Roos to King, steps around an opponent from 50, flying shot up goal from King, going right to the line, and Shepard it through! Throw in, King takes it out of the ruck contest, just explodes away from Keating, kicks towards goal, bends it back, what a goal! Now the long kick. At the back, Brown! A little bit effective towards the middle of the ground, Headland to Johnson streaming forward, he goes inside the 50, Bradshaw against Martin, Martin got the fist to it, ball at ground level, Akamanis against Cochran, great run on one on one, Jules everywhere here, Akamanis goes in for the black, he plays on, goes for goal and pops it through. Ball still alive for the Ruse, Burton tries to turn, drops the ball, here's Pickett, steps around Johnson, Byron Pickett from five metres out, kicks the goal. Burton. 
comes to Cochran. Somehow gets it forward. Where's the dangerous picket? Is that a goal? I think it is. Yes, it is. Craig McRae, tenth touch coming up. Spots a target. Goes towards the 50. Oh, Johnson! What a man! <laughs> and Port Adelaide thrashed Richmond by 84 points square. as the Tigers' season Stevens. continued to unravel. In this game so far, Franco, interesting. Cockatoo Collins. Jews away, he can kick a goal from here, runs down to the 50, lines up, do they get their second of the turn? Yes they do, long range vintage Stuart Jew, this is Poulton on the wing, Burgoyne breaks for him, he puts it into space, that's a wonderful kick, Burgoyne wheels around, tries to be precise, sets it up, laid up fingertips to it, at the back Burgoyne tries to flick it out, it was Sean, picked up by a Jew, comes back to Laid. Laid stops, Goes again and tips a goal. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we, where do you start? <laughs> uh, we, we've had a chat about it as a group uh, at this stage. Um, what's said there might be best left behind closed doors. Kangaroo and Sydney star Wayne Squash publicly farewelled his supporters after the Geelong clash at the SCG. In fact, 2002 saw the curtain close on the careers of several greats of the game. It's so hard to say goodbye because I know once I leave, it's, there's no return. Essendon's second win in a row had the Dons climbing the ladder again, but its injury toll kept mounting. That's a nightmare for Mark McHugh because he's been sharp tonight. He's uh, led wheel into the footy on occasions and that's straight up the race. And Mark McHugh's groin injury would see him miss the rest of the season, while Dustin Fletcher's indiscretion with Nathan Brown gave the defender a two-week holiday. Oh, <laughs> Another to get suspended was David Schwartz in a game that turned out to be the demon swan song. The main story of the week was the resignation of Sydney coach Rodney Eade. Obviously there's been a lot of speculation and innuendo on the, obviously the results um, ha haven't been there this year and uh, know that seven years is a reasonable time and obviously they um, thought to change direction so obviously you've got to get on with life. His replacement Paul Ruse continued the tradition of mid-season replacements having first up victories. Long towards attacking, 50 and a good mark's been taken by Buchanan. Wide handball, Fosdyke has already kicked a couple. He can almost seal it with this one and his face tells the tale. The Burgoyne brothers kicked 11 goals between them as the power maintained their position on top of the ladder. Murphy backs up again, got a couple to beat, numbers too much. Holding the ball, Burgoyne picks it up, round the body, bang. Ouch. Gilby. Cough it up, Bishop to clear. They could have hurt him on the counter attack. Look out, it could be a two goal turnaround. Here is Roger James. He's had three bounces, draws a man over the top. Chance now for Poulton to run down. Jared Poulton runs to 45. Huge handball over the top to Burgoyne. It's Sean. He steps around, thinks about the banana, goes back on the right and pops it through. Where up? Over the top to Poulton. Spears a kick towards Burgoyne. This is his brother Peter. Anything you can do, I can do better. I'll kick five as well. At Subiaco, Ben Cousins led his Eagles at the House of Pain in a strong win over the Crows. Handball out. Fletcher. 
Short kick, wasn't Leon. 15. Cousins has to swing onto his right boot. He does so. He goes for goal. Happy birthday, Ben Cousins. Hampton front though Chambers, generally good with the football, sends it long for Cousins, and what a mark. Cousins plays on immediately, 45 metres out, not his best effort, towards the opposite pocket and Lynch. Cousins, how about this, 30 metres in the clear, the champs away, one bounce, running down towards half forward, sets it up, Lynch is the target, oh. Lynch is the marker. It took until round 14, and it was only by a point, but Carlton's second win for the season gave Blues fans hope they could avoid the famous club's first ever wooden spoon. Kept it going. Camparelli, who's dangerous, pulls it back to centre half forward. McKernan, who's been very good, has taken the mark right on the 50. He kicks from 53 metres out. Has it got the carry? It wasn't pretty. It was effective. He's got five. I think they've had the least scoring opportunities from their kick in at the other end. Tivendale kicks to the square. Hard oh, up and takes a screamer. In the last line of defence, can that spark the Blues? He runs out with two bounces. Hits Whitnell at defence at 50. Under eight minutes left in the game. Carlton by two points. Hanging on. Chipping the ball around. Just on the back, here. back to Lance. At half back. Houlihan does oh. it beautifully. Oh. Soft hands. Now he plays on straight away. Lappin's kept running. Here's Lappin. He drops the easy mark. Now he recovers. He squares it up. The kick is a beauty. And the mark has been taken by Doring. He's kicked two for the season. A vital goal. Ooh. He kicks the goal and Carlton lead by eight points. Last roll of the dice. Carlton are going to win. Over the top it goes. The countdown is on. Two, one. Carlton won by eight points. The spotlight then swung to the defeated Tigers, in particular Matthew Richardson, who had a night to forget. Goes down looking for Richardson. What's he done? He just let the ball run on there. Watch this. And he gave up on it all. He gave up. He just became petulant. He actually cursed before it got the there. Before it got to him. <laughs> Richmond then made the unusual decision the following Monday of announcing that the star forward had been dropped to their VFL side Coburg. We've come to the conclusion, uh, a mutual decision, that the only course of action uh, for his unacceptable behaviour on Friday night is to go back to the VFL. Essendon welcomed back two of their champions in Matthew Lloyd and James Hurd, and apart from a protective glove and head guard respectively, it looked as if they'd never left. And now Smith to half forward, Bolton in front, man in the back. Numbers here with the Bombers, Hurd dives in, brilliantly played. Darcy. Lopes, sold the tummy, now dish to Johnson, he's forced to handle hurriedly to Brown, clever little tad, that's a big tackle laid on Gallic by Hurd. In the midfield, Peveril, run provider by Hurd, kick towards half forward, over the head of Lloyd, chance of Barna, brilliant piece of play to Lloyd, who kicks it, goal! Sensational play from Barna and Matthew Lloyd. Carousel, Hurd, who has run from half back, can he set something up, kick towards... Four, four. Lloyd with the set, he's oh. got it. He's been played, he has. Yeah. Matthew Lloyd. Yet two Bulldogs who would eventually receive all Australian recognition, Luke Darcy and Nathan Brown, ensured the contest would go down to the wire. Kick out wide. Darcy got rid of Lucas and play on the call. Darcy needs to kick a goal. And he does. With seconds remaining, the Bombers trail by one point. Desperate. Comes to cross. Croft gets it out to West. West kicks only as far as Barnard. Here's a chance. He bangs it long. Can Lloyd complete the story tonight? It's a free, free kick. kick. It's a free kick to Lloyd. So and the siren's gone. The siren's gone. And Lloyd can complete the Cinderella comeback. In he comes for goal number six. He's missed it. We have a tie at Colonial. Two Victorian sides had important interstate victories this round. Collingwood set up their win with a 13-4 goal first half. Does it well, gets it out to Burns, around the body, looking for Fraser. Now he got the hands up, couldn't quite hold it. Punched away, died out, kept his feet, he was dragged, he'll get a free kick. Umpire pays the advantage, running into an open goal. Josh Fraser kicks his first. 
So it's Biglands versus Fraser. Fraser gets a tap, knocks it forward. Here's a chance for Leon Davis. He knocks it forward into an open goal. Magic Leon kicks Collingwood sixth in a row. Biglands and Fraser will knock down Leon Lightning Davis through traffic. Spears the ball around his body. And Collingwood can do no wrong. Leon's got two. And Melbourne playing a home game in Brisbane gave the Lions a 37 point start at quarter time before running away for a memorable victory. Or rather Walsh came back to Vardy, goes down towards the pocket, Neats had it fisted away, that was brilliant defence down there by Lepic. Close to the boundary line, Johnston lights it off the boot. He's kicked it. Short, Walsh is away, draws a man. They're running away with it now. Walsh. Runs through the wing, kicks inside the 50. Guess who? And should he kick this? It's a long way back for the Lions. But still, plenty of time. It's simply the way the game is being played. Meets. Oh, that is as straight as you could wish. Straight through the middle. Meets gets another one. Melbourne pull away. Spinning out of trouble, into more trouble. McGrath against the flow, Uze. Did pretty well in that tight situation to Bruce. Needs an accurate kick to sew it up. It's an accurate kick. It's sewn up. While the scoreboard from this round 15 Collingwood and Geelong clash indicated the continual improvement of Mark Thompson's young cats. It'll run on Bruce was there. Johnson goal number four. Yes, sir. The talking point was the Magpie captain Nathan Buckley being reported for smearing blood on his opponent Cameron Ling. While Buckley was apologetic the next morning, I can't really say a lot on it other than other than obviously uh, it's a, an act that I'm not terribly proud of. And he eventually received a one-match suspension, as did Ling for his initial strike. Colonial Stadium saw two star forwards at their peak. First, veteran line Alistair Lynch, who kicks seven against the struggling Tigers. Wobbles a kick towards Lynch. Good fist coming from Xanta. Spills to Lynch. He kicks seven. And Melbourne skipper yeah, David Neitz moved into Coleman medal favouritism with nine against the Blues. The lead of Neitz, beautiful. She's just beautiful. Just beautiful. Wheatley, Powell, can bomb it inside 50. Got Neitz in a pretty good position, but the kick faded. But Neitz still made up ground. And he'll line up to break his own record. David Neitz for goal number nine. He's got it. The game also notable for the return from a serious knee injury of Carlton superstar Anthony Kudafidis. The Kuda comes in. Beautiful kick is on its way. Something for the Blue Baggers to celebrate. Kuda is back. At the SCG, Sydney hosted Port Adelaide in a thriller. Close to the boundary, Stevens keeps it alive. Oh, Saddington, Hall, can he put it through? Can he win the game? Big bad Barry, take a bow. The powers Jared Poulton, who after the win paid tribute to a recently departed close friend, was the post-match hero. Ball for to Schofield, they get the take away. Poulton! It has been an unbelievable season oh. for shots after the siren. It has been, and you feel for the kid, and really do a feel monumental for season you for this for kind it. of climax. You'd love to be there, wouldn't you? You'd love to. This is what you dream of. Step up on the plate, do it. <laughs> Every kid in the backyard with the big trees lined up with the footy before mum calls you in for dinner. The shot for goal after the siren to win it. Jared Poulton. Your time has come. Drop part. Your time has come. What a win. Mark Choco Williams. Ecstasy with the Port Adelaide boys. It was something special today. It was, yeah. I really uh, tried to dedicate the game to him and, uh, you know, we're thinking of him all the time. And uh, just tell us about the kick. The SCG, it went up like a cauldron, and you were the man in the spotlight. Yeah, I knew I could kick the 50, so it's just a matter of, I don't know, getting back and trusting yourself, backing yourself in. I hope lucky it went through. Two sensational grabs from this round from the Hawks' Nathan Thompson. 
and Stephen Coops of the Dockers deserve their place in the marks of the year. They need another goal, Thompson. Oh, yes, sir! A Jeff White. This means danger for the Bulldogs. Players are just a little bit free of my normal. Smith unloads with a long kick grab. There's one for the highlight reel. They don't come much better on the chest, if you don't mind. Six possession, high kick oh. inside 50. Brilliant mark taken by Medhurst. Strides through the wing, kicks inside the 50. Thompson will play. Oh. That is a catch and a half. That oh, is mark of the year, Edward. That is a screamer. That is an absolute beauty. Looking dangerous here. Cook swings it back towards Coops. Oh! Well, that's what we come to see pretty for, KB. Blokes yeah. taking marks and grabs like that. Absolutely brilliant. Through the traffic, Shannick won that ball. Min Long we go. Oh! That is one of the best marks I have ever seen. I agree. Determination. That is unbelievable. Have, have a look, look at, at this one. Courage. Fantastic. Penetrating kick. Oh! Leo Barry! Leaping Leo up over the top. What a grab. Gets a bit of distance on the kick. He missed from 30. Oh! Look at that Robertson! It was an absolute beauty! Inside 50, Wilson! Mark of the day! Well, I said he didn't jump all that high, but did he get to sit there? Collingwood got back on the winner's list and revenged its round one humiliation with an 11 goal to three second half against Richmond. Davis gets inside the 50, lines up and he's kicked it! By that. The intended, still he goes, gets through, important kick, and he's got it, his second. Importantly, it achieved the victory without its skipper. It was perceived, rightly or wrongly, that if you can stop Nathan Buckley, you generally stop Collingwood. And that's the last thing that this football club needed and needs, and we've been able to work beyond the one-man band. For the second week in a row, the Cats turned it on in front of a big crowd, this time against Essendon. Jumping off the ground! Brilliant! Yeah, they're running out of time, the Bombers. It's been an uninspiring last quarter, but it's suiting Geelong just fine. Gee, Barnard might have hurt his left knee here. Anyway, Lord in the middle has kicked it to the 50, falls a bit short. Here's a chance for Kingsley. He's got four! He's got four! The Western Derby saw Fremantle home by five goals against their arch rival. From 50 metres, little zig inside, gets it back to Carr. Carr, will he give it off? No, left foot, he's good both sides, brilliant with the left. Ball spills, Pavlich, can he sink it? He's kicked the goal, and he punches the air. And in the week where their captain Robert Harvey was ruled out for the season due to a shoulder injury, the Saints saved themselves and virtually condemned Carlton to the wooden spoon. Two more greats of the game bowed out this round. First, Matthew Knights, whose beloved Tigers just failed to get over the line for him. 3.42, Bombers by a point. Throw in. Salmon's got it! Salmon has kicked the goal! Bombers by seven points! The old man has done it again for the Bombers! And the final accolade to a champion to be cheered from the arena. Also the crowd. At Colonial Stadium, it was the farewell appearance for 1990 Brownlow medalist and Bulldog champion Tony Liberatore and the 250th game milestone for one of his great rivals in Anthony Stevens. 
There was also plenty of drama pre-game where Roo coach Dennis Pagan gave Sam Newman the first public indication that his 10-year reign as coach could be over. The offer that was made is, uh, uh, is, is not acceptable. Not satisfactory. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I hope that uh, something can be done about it. If it can't, um, well, uh, I've probably got to consider uh, other, other avenues. When the game started, it was almost fitting that Liver would wear a war wound so early. But his teammates showed their respect for him with an eight-goal first quarter, and from there were never seriously threatened. McMahon lines up, he's already kicked one, he's got two, the youngster, Jordan McMahon. That trio there have annoyed many an opposition, Gary. And the little man at the top, a ferocious player. Up the highway, Geelong hosted Adelaide in a thriller. Clark and King, Corey to half forward and Ronnie Burns leads the race. Scherz got him. Hand on a Chapman. Cats could hit the lead here. Long kick. Chapman. Cats do hit the lead. Pro skipper Mark Rusciuto stepping up when the game had to be won. Long kick to the advantage of Pinky. Good mark. Can race on. Can kick the goal or go with the pass to Rusciuto. Takes the mark. The Crows come away from a half back. They've got the loose man, Bickley. Can he get it on to Scher? He does. Scher runs into space. space One bounce. Back. He can go all the way. Drop part. Howl at travel. Off hand. Oh. Rusciuto. He is everywhere. He the emotion has. of the win reaching boiling point at siren time for former cat coach Gary Ayres. High kick. Can they get the mark? No. The Crows hold on. And Gary Ayres at his old. <laughs> Just letting one or two of the patrons here know that the Adelaide Crows have achieved a rare victory at Skilled Stadium. While Ayres was given a suspended $5,000 fine, his antagonist was giving his side of the story. We looked around and here's Mr Ayres giving us the uh, finger sign, so I retaliated, which I think I had every right to do. Friday night football saw the game's greatest rivals face off and it resulted in the greatest of humiliations that Collingwood handed Carlton. Buckley stole the footy, kicks inside the 50, runs loose at the back, Wiggins falling to the ground untidy as a result, okay. Murphy couldn't control it, Davis could, slips away, snaps and bounces through the goal. Look out, wonderful quick silver stuff. Kevin Sheedy gave an upfront preview to his Dons hosting the Lions. No rules this week against Brisbane as far as I'm concerned. None whatsoever. You're saying that? Anything can happen. That's all I'm saying. Before his charges were good to his word at Colonial Stadium. And it's on already. There's his opponent from the grand final, Brad Scott. I wonder if he'll get another shot at James Hurd tonight. No rules, Hutto. No. Uh, the coach has come out and said that through the week, Kevin Sheedy. No rules. Well, this is one of the biggest mellows we've had yeah, all year. It's one of the biggest mellows for a while. A little push fires breaking out everywhere. The, the AFL Empires have brought the ball back to the middle. Yeah, the AFL will be counting the dollars because they'll be fined for wrestling. I reckon Brad Scott needs to be moved on to James Hurd straight away. Well, it could be debated who won the fights. There were 19 tribunal charges in all. The match was a TKO to the visitors. And that is another good kick towards full forward. Leach can use the strength. No mark, no free kick. McRae knows how to jag them. What a time for a kick like that from Craig McRae. That will really sting. The next morning, Brisbane coach Lee Matthews suggested his side should not be out of pocket. The rules don't allow it. That's the point. I mean, we would have quite happily, our guys are big boys. I mean, they mm. could play with no rules, but unfortunately the umpires in the AFL <laughs> reckon there is rules and, uh, and they're going to apply them. And uh, I just hope that uh, Eston play all the fine, seeing they set it up. <laughs> and only a month after being sent to football purgatory, Matthew Richardson reminded everyone that he is one of the superstars of the competition. Richardson gets on a lucky ball, runs to the goal. Got two Matthew Richardson, two in a row. Goes short, Richardson's the man, presenting himself beautifully, swings onto the right foot, a thumping right foot kick, have a look at this from Richardson, he kicks his fourth, four to run for the Tigers, to Matthew Richardson. He's Cat Darren Milburn was on the receiving end of a trademark Byron Pickett fence in one of the most brutal shirt fronts of season 2002.
Port Adelaide and Brisbane secured top two positions for themselves in contrasting styles. The power fell in at Optus Oval against a desperate Carlton. Fletcher, oh, chance for Sean Burgoyne. Oh, slick hair, what a cockatoo, Collins. He has a casual bounce and pops it through. While the Lions, welcoming back star midfielder Nigel Lappin, who displayed his usual class, had an easy win over the Western Bulldogs. All Australian fullback Justin Lepage venturing forward for three goals. Under the familiar left, his targets Lepage, he takes the mark. 55 out, Lepage wastes no time, there's no one home, so he goes for home! Magnificent! At the SCG, the Swans thump the Kangaroos, doing interim coach Paul Ruse's ambitions for permanency in the role no harm. Kelly hits the ball hard, O'Keefe desperate at the pack, Williams, quick snap, he's got it! Well, he'll be kicking from right on 50. Paul Kelly leans back, unloads and kicks another goal. Raises the arms in triumph. Adelaide won every quarter in a dominant win over Essendon. Adams, fantastic first half from him. Wide towards Stevens, well weighted ball. <laughs> Gem of the mark. He is working so hard, 13th possession. Back to Laddams. He spent a few beans to get to 50. That is a long drop back goal of the day. While in Subiaco, two young stars of the game displayed their sublime talents. First, Chris Judd. Under pressure, here's Judd. Wants to use his leg speed. Handball inside to Pryor. Back to Judd, who just kept running. White looks to corral him, gives it to Weir Punder. He wants to run around Bizzle. Chips over the top to Sirikoski. He plays on. Judd is kept running. Great running, Chris Judd. Goes to 20 metres out. Kick the goal, and he does. <laughs> Great goal, Chris Judd. And then Travis Johnson as his demons fought back for an upset win. So that Johnston, wonderful Johnston and Uze in the same metre reach makes it hard for the opposition and as a result the Eagles could pay the price Johnston runs down to the 50 somehow nobody got to him how will this bounce Banfield I don't think he got there in time it's a goal Richmond with its finals chances well and truly gone won its third game in a row in a late season surge not coincidentally, forward Matthew Richardson kicked another bag. Decides to go long, looking for Richardson. Richardson searches for his man, then almost holds the mark. Does it well, beats him point blank, beats Hay, then has a bounce, then loses it, then gets it, stands up and kicks a goal! Free goal! Five to Richo! He invents them every week! What about that one for degree of difficulty? I've got to take the head off to that. And I would say, and you've called it in, the degree of difficulty... It's just got him out. That's got to be just about goal of the season. He did everything to give it away. Down. And he Speechless. almost got his feet trapped under him when he was tackled when yeah. he was on his knees. Uh, this is a great individual effort. Look at the athleticism here. Hay didn't turn it up. Lost control. Laser tackle now. There's the trap under the knee. Oh, that's a great effort. That, <laughs> that is, is a great effort. Well, it's not platform diving, but you've got to acknowledge the degree of difficulty there. Fantastic. Collingwood lost its fourth game in six matches as Essendon returned to form under lights at the MCG. Thirty-seven-year-old Paul Salmon turned back the clock with a dominant performance in the ruck. Made it pretty tough for Josh Fraser. Salmon, look, he can still run rock. Look at him go, and he taps it over the line out of bounds. Who's his star? Another veteran, Collingwood captain Nathan Buckley, tore his hamstring, his dream of leading the Magpies out in a final now in jeopardy. At the MCG, Melbourne skipper David Neitz in his 200th game kicked seven goals and virtually secured the Coleman medal. Four goals, three and two out of bounds on the full for David Neitz in game 200. And look at that. Right through the middle and the Demons hit the front. 11 minutes into the third turn. In South Australia, the war that had been preempted earlier in the week by Crow Nigel Smart turned into reality as Port's Darrell Wakeman felt the brunt of Mark Bickley's strike. And just on way from the seat there, he's already been off the ground with some blurred vision, so that's not going to help, help at all, is it? I wouldn't think it would help. <laughs> and uh, Wanganeen just indicating to Bickley, 
what he actually did then. They saw it up on the screen, the players. The dual premiership captain suspended for five weeks. Obviously I accept the tribunal's decision um, and just hope that uh, Daryl can make a, a quick and full recovery. Wakeland with a fractured cheekbone. The match itself was the type of close contest typical of showdowns, with the power getting up by eight points. Backs himself from 50. Not bad. Not bad. It's a ripper. Friday night football saw the Roos return to form, all but ending Hawthorne's finals hopes. Brad Harding runs in to ice the game. This time he kicks the goal. One goal, six. Game over. Kangas win. While the rest of the round featured regulation away wins to leading sides, Brisbane over Geelong and Port Adelaide against West Coast. To Corns on the boundary line. Chad Corns. Oh, no. Chad Corns. That is brilliant. The talking point was two extraordinary radio interviews given by leading player manager Ricky Nixon and his client Wayne Carey. Oh, no, I think uh, Monday we'll uh, definitely know and uh, touch wood. Wayne can get home from the pub in time and we'll have an answer. Does he realise that he did the wrong thing last week or does he just think, oh, hang on, oh, Ricky, that's yeah, just part of my really, life? I mean, uh, you know, to see him uh, in the state he was in and the distress he caused a lot of people and, and uh, you know, of course, having you know, to put up with every gossip monger around Melbourne, then uh, he certainly knows what he did, all right? Half-time of the Sydney-Melbourne game he rang and demanded that he be uh, given the right of reply. And you gave him that exact right. I don't, I don't know what Ricky's on. I honestly don't. For him to, to make those comments, and like I said, I heard the whole interview um, about 20 minutes ago and am absolutely furious. The only lawsuit that uh, I could be in trouble for um, will be upsetting Ricky in a physical way. I'm, I'm, that's how upset I am. I'm not happy. You're not thinking of suing Ricky, are you? Well, look, I, I'm, going to list, I'm going to listen to what I heard um, on that particular tape again. Um, and look, there, there comes a time, Sam, where you got to where you got to stand up and, and take a stand. Um, when people uh, say blatant lies and talk about you in a in a derogatory way, and that's definitely what's happened uh, here today on on your station. And Collingwood just got there against St Kilda, securing the all important top four position in the process. Hawthorne entered the last round with skipper Shane Crawford celebrating his 200th game and his team requiring a thumping win over the Cats to make the finals. Early on, the signs were promising. Some space. Drives it long down towards full forward. Thompson launches himself. Off hands. Brown kicks another one. His second. Yet they couldn't sustain their late charge. Hawks uniforms wouldn't be required in September. The Bulldogs started there last week with a shock announcement from their coach of six and a half years. It just become increasingly more difficult to uh, to really invigorate myself, and therefore, you know, it becomes very difficult to invigorate the group. Terry's been great. Terry's gone. We will replace and find another Terry Wallace. By game time, Terry Wallace was replaced by assistant coach Peter Road, and his team played like they had a point to prove. Gilby, he can really finish it off. Fitting the Nathan Brown. While the Magpies pondered their drop-off in form leading into the finals, the benchmark teams clashed with top spot on the ladder up for grabs. Leads Lepich underneath it, has got it deep in the pocket, squares it up by hand, Primus goes bang! Here's Treadray, got one high, got one high again, got out of it beautifully, gave it over to Ward Corns, he needs a kind bounce, he gets it, looking to hand pass off, he does, round the body goes Guerra. Oh my God, my Guerra! Chance for Notting. He goes deep, it's a two on two. Oh. Michael Voss, up he goes, takes the mark, runs away, 10 metres out and slams it through. Port Adelaide lead, they led it three quarter time by 28 points. Power out of the middle. High kick, oh, oh. wonderful mark by Montgomery. So Chad Courts has gone back where he originally started this game. He's gone to Jonathan oh, Brown. Oh, Hedlund to Black. Black left foot kick is a wonderful goal. 
Brisbane are right back in this. Every player out there is going at it 100%. McDonald taps to open space. It's dangerous. Hart to power. Squares it back to oh, Walter Lapic. Roger James becoming the late game hero for the power. Ground level. Here's a chance for Stevens. Stevens goes high and long towards the goal square. To a two back. Oh, and almost brought it down. Here's James. He's had a marvellous game. He puts him in front. Brilliant goal. In the Saturday night games, Sydney gave Paul Kelly and Andrew Dunkley the send offs they deserve. Just a little bit too much on the kick for Kelly. Gasper. <laughs> Shoot. Great tackles by the Swans. Barry's got it back again to Seymour. This could be another one. And Lockwood from 55. Thumping kick. It's offline. Swarble keeps it in. Oh, Kirk gets a go. Melbourne finished the home and away rounds with a solid win over St Kilda, where perhaps a glimpse into the future was shown from performances of the Saints' Nick Rewalt. Trying to give it to you. good, tough work, both sides. Baker tunnels it out, did enough, got it to Thompson. Thompson off one step, Rewalt, too good, too strong. And the demon Stephen Armstrong. Oh, this big opportunity, what a goal! That was off the back of the foot. That is an amazing goal by Armstrong. Talk about inventive. The pass was respected as well, with the D's honouring retiring Moorabbin great Stewie Lowe. Through the Melbourne guard, and that's great to see. David Neitz, Jeff White, two men he's confronted many times over the years. And I think footy's getting better at doing this. At Marnica Oval in Canberra, West Coast had a simple equation. Defeat the Kangaroos and put Geelong, whose players spent the day together watching the game on television, out of the finals. The Roos start gave the Cats hope. From 50, long drop, part 55 metre kick. Hate to tell you, Kangaroos back in front. Thump clear him by Rawlings. Colbert, Harding, inside 50. Dying seconds and he kicks the goal. Yet the Eagles' seven goal third term turned the game. And with Troy Wilson getting the better of Mickey Martin, West Coast season was alive. Get around Rawlings. Gets the kick away to half forward. Wilson. Crunch. Oh, great Chambers. Inside 50. Oh, Wilson. Oh. Mark of the day. Well, I said he didn't jump all that high, but did he get the sit there? And two other sides tuned in for the main month with easy wins. Essendon over Carlton. One bounce and the kick was very efficient. Finding Harvey. He plays on. Shot at goal. Beautiful play, Bombers. Harvey's got his first. And Adelaide, who earlier in the week announced it would be accepting Wayne Carey, made short work of Fremantle, killing the game with an eight goal to one opening term. In he comes. Chips it up. He went to school on Matthew Clark's kick. He slotted it through as well. Away. He's had two bounces. Now third runs to 40 metres. Now to 30. Oh, put down your glasses. And Byron Pink, that was inspirational stuff. Straight down the middle, Wellman kicks it straight down the throat of his teammate in Johnson. He missed it. And Brooks oh, oh, from James Hurd from full back to full forward with a twist as well. Bateman, hurry, kick. Good looking kick. That's the ceiling. What a kick. Chance Bateman. Crawford through the middle. No one coming at him off half back. This is a handed to him on a plate. Thank you very much. Two easy hawks. Crawford has three. Again, this back line under pressure. Tracker deep in the pocket. What can he conjure? Magnificent. Oh, unbelievable. Akamanis on the charge. This will lift the crowd. Akamanis takes him on. Backs himself. Now you see. Now you don't. Pulls a rabbit out of the head. Might be the best goal I've seen for the year. That's why he's such a dangerous player. Richardson right on the boundary line, 50 metres out. Stafford, punch away good. Rhoda! Hand to boot. Good ball incredibly quickly. Got his first. Now they're under pressure. Here's Judd. Wants to use his leg speed. Handball inside to Pryor. Back to Judd who just kept running. White looks to corral him, gives it to Wim Hunter. He wants to run around Bizzle. 
Chips over the top to Sirikoski. He plays on. Oh, Jones can run. Griswold, from right on the boundary line. Don't oh. tell me. What oh. a goal! You should buy a Tazlato ticket when you kick him like that. That is unbelievable. To what Punda waited for the handball, has a bounce, approaches 50, steps inside once, twice, has another bounce. Cap it off, David Wood, Punda! Cap it off, he does! Brilliant stuff! Nathan Buckley looked on as his Magpies made their first finals appearance since 1994. Yet while underdogs against the power at Amy Stadium, with the crucial week's break up for grabs, Collingwood was switched on from the start. Paul LeCuria with 40 possessions outstanding, acting Collingwood captain Anthony Rocker led a deadly forward line. Wobbles the kick inside, attacking 50. Rocker hit it hard, chance for Nick Davis. Handball to Lockyer. Batheris is free, he snaps, and he goes. Stevens, thumps it long. Tarrant at the back. So is Batheris, uses O'Brien. Kicks it inside, attacking 50. Burns, who casually wipes his hands on his shorts before he takes the mark in Scott Burns style. Burns from 45, drop punt on its way, he's kicked it! Cutting the by 23! Port Adelaide rallied at the start of the last quarter, yet the visitors were more desperate when it counted. No, a pass set play on, so Jew for Port Adelaide can unload a bomb here. He does that to the tip of the goal square. Burn boy! Brilliant mark, it'll go back for goal number four. He plays on, he's got it. One on one all over the field. Forcing the kick long. He does indeed. The kick long. He dumps it long. Leon Davis in front. Bolton at the back. Taron has it. Tries to get it out. Davis. He snaps. And he goes. He's kicked the goal. The Magpies are into the preliminary final. At Colonial, Essendon knocked the Eagles out of the finals. Yet the heavy concussion to star forward Matthew Lloyd and the report and subsequent suspension of fullback Dustin Fletcher dampened the victory. Be reportable. I'll tell you what, he's hurt too. He's in trouble. That is very dangerous. Scott Lucas ventured into attack in the third quarter in a match winning move. Collicker underneath it. Couldn't mark it. Lucas slaps it down. Chance for Ramanaskis. Out. That's a good kick. Moorcroft. Good mark. And can go. Handballs off. I don't know if that was the option, but Lucas says yes, it was. Bonners are back. Starting to look a bit threatening, they move, they move it forward, Jason Johnson out in front, Barnard has to be good, no, could have been a free kick, allowed to go on, this is when they like Rioli getting it, Barnard back to Rioli, he'll go short, that's a good kick, and Scotty Lucas takes a mark. Well, things can change pretty, pretty quickly, Hutto, a lot at stake in these games. What a contest it's been. And the contest, the little mini contest we're seeing all over the ground. Lucas kicked two goals so far. This could be the third. Scott oh, Lucas! Oh, what a move by Sheedy! Wellman into the middle. Decides to run now. Judd just behind him hobbling. It's into the forward line. Off the ground, Lynch. It was a volley, Ramanaskis. Over the top. Oh, here we go. Fish. What we'll kick a goal! And... <laughs> That's all she said. He's got the cramp. <laughs> the Dons booked to travel west to take on Port Adelaide in week two. At the Gabba, the Brisbane Lions humiliated Adelaide. Rusciuto, Edwards. Well played. They try and work it out. Came from Crowell. Hart. Turnover again. Hart steadies from 35. And kicks a superb goal. Veteran big man Alistair Lynch booting seven. Down cleverly to McRae. He strokes the tackle, runs in, handball to Lynch. Easy as you like. He's kicked six. On the rebound, here come the Lions. Akamatis has got about 45 metres on his nearest opponent. Kicks to odds, half forward. Gets to Notting. Notting's a great kick. Kicks on the lead. Lynch again. 
just stabbed at the last one. This time he kicks through it and kicks a goal. He's kicked seven. Collingwood's upset in Adelaide, ensuring the Lions a home preliminary final, the Crows with more travel ahead of them. And in the last game of week one, Melbourne's seven goal second quarter set up its authority of 38 point win over the gallant Kangaroos. Mates has picked him up. Play allowed to go on. Archer Keep dribbles it, simple, it out. Not well only Charlie Meeks down there after having chased long by Wheatley. They'll jump in here. Uze! Keep it low. It's a goal. Uze has number two. Archer, Harvey. The team is starting to win all the contests now. Green didn't look just get in there quickly to David Meads. Johnston to land ahead. If he can get clear, there's Stevens everywhere. Vardy, it's your turn. And he made sure of it. He made sure of it. That's his second. And he'll run with it. Players forward of the ball. Russell Robertson has done beautifully. He will move in long. Vardy with the sit. Meads, it's a goal. Russell Robertson, goal number two in his last quarter. While LaRue's publicly thanked retiring star John Blakey, the match proved the last of Dennis Pagan's celebrated career as kangaroo coach. Essendon with James Hurd returning, but minus bookends Matthew Lloyd and Dustin Fletcher threw everything at Port Adelaide in the first half of their sudden death semi-final, taking in a two-goal lead at half-time. Here's McGrath, the young man in his sixth game. She heard was going past. All the youngsters would have given it to him. Gets it in. Lucas is down there now. He can get into the game. He, well, he acted like an offender. And he's created the ten for Jason Johnson. And he takes it. He takes it and the bombers are back. Sheets. Working overtime. Keep the pressure on port at the moment. So French back over the top. Well done, McVeigh. Rioli. Rioli to go at goal, and that is a goal. The home side, however, came out hard after the main break. A six goal to one third quarter, busting the game open. Over the top, said Schofield starting to find it. That's better. Into the square, Wellman, Treadray, Treadray! Still in attack, Blumfield. Nick Stevens. Oh, great tackle, great second in the next He improvised beautifully and kicked the left one goal. Now Port are away. Has to move it. That's a better kick. Direction of Corns. Corns got it and moves. Can handball around and he will finish. It is another. A trip to Brisbane for a preliminary final awaited the power. For the Bombers, their frustrating injury-riddled season was over. The Crows, coming off away games in Perth and Brisbane the previous fortnight, showed no signs of travel fatigue in their dynamic eight-goal opening term against the Demons. Here's McLeod, feeds the handball out. Johnson has a shot at goal. Crows have got their third. Well, that's disappointing. Oh, the Leeds kick, it's a shocker. Chance for Johnson, McLeod, he's got it, gives it off. Chance for the Crows, snap from Laddams, he's high and straight. Melbourne then rallied in front of their home supporters, kicking 15 goals in the next two quarters. To Bruce, he's got Vardy on, he gives it to Vardy. It's going to be a difficult kick from this angle. He squeezes the left foot down, it's a miracle goal! Stengel, and look out. Oh, Bissell, oh, right Bissell, Bissell. Turnover, now a chance for the Demons. Armstrong, easily running. He's had one bounce, didn't come back to him. He's still got some time. Hard up against the bad foot. This is where Barney was. Oh. He went back to the It's the Barney stuff from Adam Uzo. You wouldn't believe it. They're fighting hard. This is a crucial takeaway. Landry with Armstrong to Johnston. He's away. He runs to 50. He can oh, keep wow. going. They now trail by 17. Robertson just thumps it high. Neats underneath it. He'll need to do well to mark oh. that. At ground level, it's all crows. Or is it? Way wide and streets the handball. Liam Chelly. Johnston dribbles it and kicks it. 
Superb corrupted play in the Melbourne forward line. Johnston has four. Their effort left the tank empty. The 69-point turnaround had one last twist. Adelaide rallying in a classic. Good one, little toe poke. Out of the congestion. Rashudo, loose player, Miss Johnson. Cancel Stevens from 30. He kicks. He's gone. The close battle in front. Well, Woden goes long. Oh, great guy from the side. Stengler, he can play on here. Tyson Stengler goes for home. Into the goal square almost. They're wrestling off the ball. to put the game beyond doubt for the Adelaide Crows. From outside 50, a thumping kick. There's the siren. Adelaide, a remarkable victory. Have come from behind to defeat Melbourne in what's been one of the great finals matches. The Magpie Army was out in force for the first of the preliminary finals. 88,960 bathed in September sunshine roared as Josh Frazier got the home side going. And they need him for being harassed by Hart, but he released it. Burns, tough one to take. Rocker versus Smart. Get back the experience of Smart. Good pressure by the Pies. The Crows has always bounced back. Chance now, real chance at that. Two bounces. Let's make it three, says. Let's make it four. He's carrying it a long way. Hands off to McLeod. It's 45 from goal. And Andrew McLeod kicks a goal. Then in the second quarter, controversy as Tyson Edwards left the field with a broken nose and concussion. Jason Cloak on report. Well, no matter what happens for the rest of the day, Jason Cloak will be very nervous. And you can uh, see nose. the result there. Yeah. It's I don't technique. think there was any doubt. He went to hit the ball on. Well, Maybe a little bit reckless. If there was a game-turning moment, it was provided by Anthony Rocker. Collingwood will give nothing at the moment. And a little bit of run lonely. This is a guy they want with the ball. Normally beautiful with his skills. Certainly his kicking skills. He's carried it just over centre. A oh, great kick. kick. And Rocker has got it. And look out, because this is his range. Well, this is a man, if he stands up, they're going to be very hard to beat. Here we go. It goes up. Oh, it's no. up. And it's home. What a goal. And a goal here. Boy, have to ask yourself whether they're able to get back the Crows. It's a bit of time. Does it stay in? It's a goal. Collingwood and Steinford. The Pies hanging on to their three-quarter time break. Nick Davis, is he able to finish? Keeps it low. And finishes it! That is what they were looking for, and that is the finish. Loose ball. Players will go in pretty tight, as you can imagine. Nick Davis through the traffic on the Dynak. He loves a goal. Can he get on the left foot? He can. Around the body. At the Gabba, the Lions, who started in a rusty fashion following their week's break, stepped into overdrive after quarter time. Oh, play on. Squares it up. Now it's taken by Nottingham to get one eventually. Headlam, it was great strength. Handles back to Lappin. What can he do with his fantastic skills? He decides to dish to Black. And Black drives it home for a goal. One time number one draft pick Des Headland in awesome form. Well, Brown attacks it again. Beautiful play. Here comes Headland. Headland goes bang. Here's a chance for the Lions. A snap. Dizzy Headland's done it again. He's got his third. Heart turn over. Here we go. Look at this. Fuss can run on a kick of goal. We'll get it to power. He sidesteps. He should go to power. No, he decides to bang it himself. Superb! And for the second year running, Brisbane are into the grand final. This time, they'll take on Collingwood.
The week started well for the Brisbane Lions. Midfielder Simon Black following teammate Jason Akamanis winning the Charles Brownlow medal. We therefore declare that Simon Black is the 2002 Brownlow medal winner. Conversely, for Collingwood, youngster Jason Cloak was suspended for two weeks for his preliminary final indiscretion. The subsequent appeal also failed, leaving his father, Collingwood and Richmond great David Cloak fuming. Here's a situation where Kit's got his eyes on the ball the whole time. And, you know, it's shown that, and with everything, that, and they come up with a result like this. I just can't believe it. When the grand final began, the conditions turned the game into a desperate slog. The ball and Lions play goes down. Umpire lets it go, Rocker. 34 goals this season in his 23 games, Anthony Rocker. Kicked three last time these teams played in round eight. From 51 metres, it's a thumping kick. It's coming back. Headland wastes no time. Kicks it to the tip of the goal square. Lynch from the side, no mark. Front and centre. McRae, that was clever to Hart. Hart a left foot snap. Brisbane have got there first. Ackermanis attacks it. Chipped over his own feet, I reckon. Got caught high. Umpire set play on Ackermanis. Did well in the clinches to get it to Johnson. His kick's pretty ordinary to Voss. Oh. Burns lines him up and goes bang. 50 metres out. Beautiful pick up by Voss to Black. Should have a shot! Great play, Brisbane! Steinford dishes to his skipper. Buckley, touch number 13. And again, it's a superb kick to half forward. Well, we've just seen Buckley double up, get the footy, and hit Burns with a 50-metre pass that time. Burns, he's got Lockyer on, he's found some space. Michael just gave him too much space. I don't know if it was his man or not. But he just signed off him, and Tarkin Lockyer took an uncontested mark, and he'll line up from 45 metres out. Slightly better than a 45 degree angle. In he comes, a 22 year old from 45 metres out, and that splits the middle. At no stage did either side get more than nine points in front. Respective skippers Nathan Buckley and Michael Voss were outstanding. Kicks it straight to Lockyer, to Buckley, who won loads from. Again, Johnson against Akamanis. Akamanis won the footy. Got it to Voss. Here we go. Voss from 55. Goal! At three quarter time, the Lions led by four points. The match was still up for grabs until late in the tense last quarter. Lonely, desperate lunge. Couldn't stop Rocker. Anthony Rocker is going to lock you break you yeah. in the square, but he's cool and calm and says, I'm taking on the responsibility. Four goals straight. And what a kick now. Toughish angle. He'll cover the distance, no worries about that. Anthony Rocker to put Collingwood back in front of the MCG. Anthony Rocker kicks it behind. There's only about 30,000 Collingwood people behind the goal trying to convince the goal umpire. Well, Rocker liked it. He liked it a lot. He can't believe it. Johnson runs his full measure, the umpire had the whistle to the mouth. Fraser couldn't mark it, but he managed to guide it in front. Bathyrus, and now Scotland, the Magpies are running if it bounces for Lecuria. He did well, Preston Giacoma had to release it. Chris Tarrant has really lifted to try and help out his mate Rocker. Gets it going again, Davis beats Scotland. O'Gree, Voss, Scotland again, off the left boot, into the square, from the side, Fraser! Joshua Fraser has taken the mark at the 10 minute mark of the last quarter. The number one draft pick has kicked two goals and if ever he has to stand up and doing it for Collingwood, it's right now. Josh Fraser pretty close to the man on the mark, but he seizes the moment. The Magpies back in front. The Magpies in front. Michael Voss, the captain, 
into the square. Can someone take a mark? You wouldn't think so in those conditions. Free, free kick. kick. Lions free kick. Yes. Alistair Lynch. He's been screaming for it all day. And finally the umpire's given it to him. He finished last year with the ball in his hand. When the siren went. And he's put the Lions back in front. Yes, he has. It took a bit of Jason Akamanis magic to seal the match. Five minutes of game time left. Buckley desperate slaps it out. Can Leon Davis pick it up? He's bowled over. Back to Brad Scott. Around the corner to the full forward area. Lynch can't manufacture a mark. Akamanis left foot snap. Johnson with pace, carrying it to half forward, Nick Davis, Fraser makes the lead.